Okay, what's up world? It's Patrick Lovell, Truth Bomb Riffing on Friday, October 27th at 1 p.m. my time. And happy Halloween to you all. And I'm sure there's more of you than not, especially if you're north of the age of, let's say, 40, um, that are probably looking around and going, yeah, it definitely seems to be this thing where it's like truth is stranger than fiction, right? I mean, I think a lot of us, um, I know I am, a fan of horror films. And uh, boy, the situation with this mass shooting in Maine, as sad and as tragic it is, as it is, it, boy, it has all sorts of earmarks of the classic horror film. You know, a guy who is deranged, who uh, comes across weapons. And in this case, you know, obviously, like in most of these mass shootings, a uh, an assault rifle based on all of the sorts of, you know, the laws and everything that we've been debating for literally decades now. Um, you know, can can wind up leading to a, a massive tragic uh, calamity. And uh, in this particular case, the guy opens fire in a couple of different places. And it looks to me that, uh, you know, the death count rose pretty significantly yesterday. I think there was, you know, guesstimates that it was between 15, 15 and 21, but that there were over 50 people injured in a uh, rampage uh, as a result of this. And I can only imagine being in the midst of all of that, given all of the horror films that we've seen, right? But then the guy goes and disappears, and uh, there's this massive manhunt. And yeah, where, where have we seen this story before, right? Uh, both in fiction and obviously reality, more times than most of us would care to uh, acknowledge. You know, add that to the, the turmoil in Gaza and what's going to come after the October 7th attack by Hamas that murdered you know, indiscriminately in horrific ways. And then, of course, you know, over 5,000 people dead in the retaliation by Israel. And now there's going to be incursions into the West Bank. And, you know, all of that is, you know, a horror show in its own right. And it has been for a long time and decades. And, you know, I've said what I had to say in a couple of these things um, about, you know, my position on Israel and, you know, my belief that Israel obviously has a right to exist. I would, I would prefer as a democracy, um, because of history, I understand the idea of a Jewish state, all things considered, in a very monumental way. But uh, it's a tragedy in a lot of directions. And uh, a lot of the ways this whole thing works and will play out is really kind of a continuation of everything that I've been revealing to you and will continue to. And I appreciate the new likes and subscribes and shares. I really appreciate you know moving that needle up in a tremendous way. Because... This is almost like shooting fish in a, in a barrel. And I'm not talking about the analogies to horror films and tragedy and all the rest of it, but what it is that I'm revealing to you, particularly in you know the most recent revelations regarding Trump and uh, all of the things that I continue to reveal to you that the government is demonstrating Trump has broken the law and all of these uh, different you know variables that from where I'm sitting – should have been prosecuted and we should have convicted this ass clown, you know, maybe two years ago, um, particularly on the civil side. You know, some of the stuff that Letitia James is involved with goes back decades. And, uh, you know, not to mention the, the corruption and the stuff that's involved with his family and his son-in-law and his former Treasury Secretary and Saudi Arabia. And it goes on and on and on and on. But ultimately, you know, as I've revealed in many of these truth bombs, look, the, the, the low hanging fruit is that Donald Trump defrauded the United States, losing, uh, uh, you know, deceptive acts and practices with illegal documentation fraud in that particular case to steal the election. But there were things that he had learned because of everything that I'm revealing to you that ultimately now has incriminated what we've seen over this past week and an amazing array of attorneys. Uh, you know, basically, you know, giving up the goods uh, and they're going to be kind of going to low hanging fruit to turn over because of the criminal fraud exception that proves that, you know, attorneys were involved with lying, which is crimes. And then ultimately, you know, we'll see more questions regarding judges and all of that sort of thing and corruption there as well. Not to mention everything else I revealed to you. I mean, we've seen, you know, SCOTUS and all the things you know, Clarence Thomas and more revelations this week and insane corruption there and across the board. And that's what I continue to reveal to you. And I, and I and it's all really simple. All of this stuff, whether it's international calamity and wars and, and not mass shootings, although mass shootings to a degree, when you consider kind of the 
the connection vis-a-vis -vis dark money and who's behind it and why the NRA operates the way it does and who's behind it and all of these types of things. And I want to address just, you know, really briefly, uh, you know, my position on all things assault rifles. You know, I'm not against gun ownership. And I think it should be just like all Americans, uh, you know, owning and operating cars. We make you jump through hoops. And it's, I know in the Constitution of the Second Amendment, it's actually a right, you know, and we always tell our children, for example, and we remember when we were going through um, getting our driver's license and everything else, that driving isn't a right. It's a privilege. And the idea is you've got to go through and you've got to get the training and you've got to, you know, pass the tests and then you're going to get licensed and then you get the insurance and then you have all of these parameters by way you have to, you know, drive safely within the parameters or otherwise it eventually will lead you to having your driving privileges revoked. And of course, anybody who's gotten into DUIs, you go into three of those and three strikes, you're out and you're in jail and you're facing a shit ton of money if you haven't already killed somebody sort of thing. Right. And so. There's no tolerance. And, you know, it works pretty well considering the millions upon millions upon millions of people driving cars. And you got to think to yourself, OK, you know, when you think about the Constitution and the Second Amendment and being able to arm yourself, particularly as it relates to militias, we're not in the 1880s, my friends, or the 1780s. You know, it, it, this idea of, of these guys, you know, in these big trucks and don't tread on me, even though I love the sentiment because I'm all about don't tread on me. But you know, these guys with gun rights and, 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 you know, to be able to organize and to get in the militias, even if we had tens of millions of, uh, of, of fighters and militias, honestly, armed with even assault, assault rifle, rifles at that, there would be no challenge to the United States government's ability to respond with our military forces that would wipe these guys out in a nanosecond. The only reason we saw what we saw in the January 6th insurrection is because there were complicit actors that we've never ferreted out, both in the police as well as in the military, not to mention all the political, you know, um, layers that would prevent things like, you know, for example, the very easiest one to, to spot the National Guard, um, you know, responding immediately, not to mention special forces and everybody else. I mean, it was our capital that was infiltrated by, you know, revolutionary forces or terrorist forces, depending on what you're looking at. And, they could have been dealt with, as we've seen in Black Lives Matter, like that. Not to mention in the state militia guys that are showing up with their arms and, you know, taking pictures and they've got their Confederate flags and all that other hoopla. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, they are dangerous to a small amount of people at the wrong place at the wrong time. But could they take on the United States military? Absolutely not. Unless, of course, the United States military is complicit because more guys serving are like, yeah, well, we want to live in a world where white supremacy is what rules the day, which is obviously part of it, right? But in either case, I mean, the, the, going back to the idea of uh, assault, assault rifles, and I saw the most ridiculous X comment by, you know, Marjorie, not Marjorie Taylor Greene, although I see, you know, hundreds of uh, ridiculous comments by her, uh, from her every day, and there's a whole to do about that as well. But Lauren Bobart, you know, she said, you know, I'm not going to, you know, engage anybody's idiocracy based on, you know, thinking AR stands for assault, assault rifles and some, I don't know, demonstrably stupid reaction to the things that are going on in terms of these conversations, you know, and um, look, as we've seen over and over and over, the only thing that these assault rifles in the hands of uh, deranged lunatics lead to are murdering of innocent people. They're not a challenge the way the, you know, constitution was written to be able to hold tyranny to account that that's what I'm doing <laughs> and I'm probably the number one threat against tyranny in the entire country until somehow I mobilize tens of millions of you and it's ridiculous you know I, I, I said on X the other day I probably recognize it's probably even a smaller percentage than this but I just happen to say you know maybe one in a million people know who I am and what I've done and what it means we need to flip those percentages where one in a million people don't know who I am. Why? Because I'm telling you with the sum total of all of media, of all of disinformation and misinformation on social media and X from, you know, probably bots that are, you know, make believe, you know, representatives and they're written because I su suspect it. In fact, I should mention this right now. I happen to come across a New York Times uh, article re revealing all sorts of questions about X and like, you know, basically 
you know, uh, citing all of these research studies that um, X has led to virulent anti-Semitism and, and hate crimes and a lot of other things that are going on. And, you know, and I, and I got printed in the New York Times comment section today just saying, look, man, if I were to actually do this article and I had the resources, I'd find out who the money is behind the bots that are writing the tweets from all of these people like Lauren Bobart and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Ted Cruz and all of the, the rest of them. But I mean, in addition, I mean, the stuff that we've seen from Elon Musk, the owner of Twitter, is just insane. Not to mention, of course, the most, the, the easiest uh, to, to show literally every day, all day, I could go get elements of, um, you know, the, the nature, which is just so antithetical to free speech because all of these, these assholes on the right, you know, they like to flip flop depending on when it suits them. But the ideals of free speech versus, you know, the manipulation of, you know, uh, uh, you know, basically uh, lying, uh, defamation and hate speech and things that it leads to. And, uh, you know, not just defamation, but uh, the entirety of deception, which is illegal. You can't lie, especially when you're leading to, um, you know, outcomes that should be able to, I, I mean, I, I can't believe someone hasn't put together literally a multi-billion dollar lawsuit against Elon Musk. And I guess what he's waiting on is, um, you know, go ahead. I, I, I'll, I'll jam this up in the courts all day because I'm the richest man on earth, right? Much of which comes from what I'm revealing to you. But what I was trying to get to was his relationship with Tucker Carlson, whose entire platform is misinformation and defamation that you can prove like that. And it's like, yet the, the windbag continues to have, I don't know, the way the algorithms are written and he already had a built in audience. You know, he gets these messages that are complete absurdity to millions of people. And meanwhile, here I am, Patrick Lovell, holding the largest revelation in the last 70 freaking years, which is Federal Reserve Act 13.3 was used illegally to provide tens of trillions of dollars illegally to a bankrupt financial system that got there based on everything the government is demonstrating us that Trump is guilty of. Only in magnitudes larger. We're talking tens of millions of times larger by way of the largest criminal conspiracy and cover up in history that had more acts of, you know, uh, deception, provable deception across the board, including everything that I just mentioned to you, Donald Trump is being invest not investigated, indicted and ultimately convicted on, which includes uh, deceptive acts and practices using illegal documentation fraud, using corrupt uh, judges and corrupt attorneys. I mean, what, what I have is just absolutely monumental and you get to the bottom of it and you're like, okay, look, but that's just not my thing. And that was 10 years ago. And you know, uh, the 2008 great financial crisis, I really don't fully un understand it, but look, you know, I'm, I'm really worried about world war three and maybe guns rights and all of these other things and maybe other issues that have been around, you know, really the last 10, 15 years, such as, you know, systemic prison, uh, you know, systemic racism in the police forces and racism and all of that kind of thing. And, you know, and, and, and other equal rights and everything else. I mean, we're cats running around in circles all over the fucking place because of social media is just stupid and the algorithms and everything else. And meanwhile, is there one answer to everything? Is there one man behind the curtain? Is it Oz? Is somebody pulling the, uh, you know, the, the lovers of power to create all of this shit that everybody else is like, what? And it's like, yeah, that's what I'm showing you. And that's why I want to create the clean new deal. And I'll, t you know, extrapolate this further to, you know, the uh, the crisis in the Middle East. I mean, what happened in Gaza isn't a one-off, man. This has been going on for 30 years. There's a lot of things we could discuss about this on both sides. But primarily, the whole situation would look monumentally different, as would a potential regional conflict and escalating tensions and potentially leading to World War III and, um, you know, uh, nuclear Armageddon based on ultimately what's going to be further entrenching all of the problems that have benefited from us not stopping what it is I'm revealing to you, particularly as it relates to fossil fuel. And I know, and where I'm sitting, I mean, it, it literally would be one of the most easiest transitions at this stage of the game to an entire renewable paradigm using existing technologies and how we can fund that and everything else. But again, based on everything I'm revealing to you, and yet it's not because the powers that be have that much uh, control and they're that entrenched because of the nature of corruption, because of what we see play out all the time with all of these morons, particularly on the right, because they're just such low hanging fruit to be able to look at 
somebody like Marjorie Taylor Greene or Lowen Fogart or Ted Cruz or, you know, all of these things that these guys involved with, you know, and everything that just led to, you know, what we've got dealing with in the house. And, you know, and, and who's the worst of them all, man, the guy that's uh, out of Long Island whose name eludes me because I've been trying to get him out of my mind. Jeez, I'm just going to call him George Costanza. You know, I mean, it's just – but he's not funny. You know, wh whatever the guy's name is. I, I don't know why I can't think of his name. I literally have got a mental block. I should go out as Halloween for this guy. I was thinking about doing Neo from The Matrix, but maybe I should try to get the name right of this guy who's been indicted himself on nothing but fraud and corruption. Guys, it's just stupid. It's ridiculous. It's so it's not even Machiavellian. It's all in front of us 24-7, thousands, millions of times a day, and it, it, we got to put an end to this. There's so many incredibly smart, beautiful people in this country capable of calibrating the new paradigm like that. But what you're missing is what I've got. You know, I posted on X today, what could $70 trillion do to the benefit of our country versus what we've seen over the course of the last 13 years that seemingly nobody seems to understand besides everybody always talks about, it. oh yeah, the system's corrupt. Oh yeah, we've got this enormous you know, uh, disparity of wealth. Oh, how is it possible that billionaires doubled their wealth during COVID and on and on and on? Jesus fucking Christ, people, it's what I continue to tell you. And what I need, it, and because I'm a dynamic guy, you know, I've played sports my whole life, you know, I used to be a brawler before I got older and I, I learned that, you know, physical fighting isn't going to get my, my, my approach, uh, you know, where it needs to go. And I, you know, fortunately, like anybody else has to, has to grow up, you learn your lessons. Uh, but there's a way to brawl metaphorically in the system, using the system to be able to do what's right. And we all expect the system to work. I mean, it, again, I, I used to use these analogies all the time and I haven't dropped them in a while because I'm becoming more and more frustrated of this wall of people in this like brain dead society that doesn't seem to be able to interpret and understand what I'm telling them because it's really all this easy. We expect planes to fly. There's a way planes fly. You don't need to know how to engineer or make a plane fly. You just need to expect it to fly, to buy a ticket and to expect to get from point A to point B safely. It's not that difficult, people. Same with the brakes on your car. Same with the elevator in a building. You know, is there things that are going to go wrong every once in a while? Sure. But if we had buildings or airplanes designed like our financial system is designed, you'd have like thousands of planes fall out of the sky a year. You'd have people dying in car accidents to the tunes of tens of millions. You would have like elevators falling, you know, with people and just stuff online. Could you imagine TikTok in a world where all of these things that we depend on professionals and engineers and people and policy and the legal system getting it right if they didn't? Boy, TikTok would be certainly entertaining then. Look, I, I, I'm not trying to make light of a, just an insanely stupid situation, but I've been on this journey for 20 freaking years. We let Saudi get away with 9-11. There's a lot to that statement. I'm not saying Saudi engineered 9-11. I'm saying we let Saudi get away with 9-11. We can talk about that all day. We let uh, excuse me, Wall Street get away with 2008 and all that entails. How do I know? Because I went the distance and did what nobody else did. The New York Times, the, Chi the Chicago Tribune, the Los Angeles Times, all major media, especially billionaire-owned media, and not to mention everything that gets whitewashed and super stupid, distorted, whatever, um, on social media. I'm the only one who did it. It's called The Con. It's available at www.thecon.tv. And, um, you know, and, and, and I've got to build this movement. I You know, my last... Truth bomb, I kind of left it up to everybody. I'm like, you know, I'm challenging your, you know, your courage. I was challenging your ability to rise to the moment. I mean, literally everything's on the line. It's insane. It's stupid. It's, it's absurd. Everything's on the line, the sustainability of the planet. And it's not that difficult. I mean, I swear to God, the stuff that we had to overcome and get into this modern society was monumentally harder than what it would be to just literally slightly change the paradigm have everybody understand what we've done to fuel corruption and how we backstopped it with our legal uh, machinery and who was involved. And we got to put an end to it. And then the same with our financial system. <clears throat> does money grow on trees? Well, it does for the corrupt because you don't know how it works. And it's just like, it's a rape fest in a way that's monumentally insane compared to anything I could possibly imagine. And why is it that I'm the only person in the country that can bring you this information? 
I, I've got to win one in a million of you over. And what I'm really looking for above all else, I'm looking for people that are engineers. I'm looking for people that actually understand the paradigm of renewable energy and that understand what the possibilities are. I, I hope that I can get you to be involved with this, to come on board and, you know, um, get this message out. And then we can devel develop what the specificity of the clean new deal deal needs to get. But what I got to do is I got to get out to the American people and I've got to bring to them all of these truths that I have hundreds of hours on the shelves, tens of thousands of pieces of documentation fraud, hundreds of thousands. And I can prove this to the world because the entirety of media and our government will not allow this to break through. It's going to have to come through you and me and everybody you see who isn't a Nazi, who believes in dignity and sustainability and decency and integrity and liberty and justice for all. And we come together in unity and then we can defeat the misery of tyranny. And that's what this is. This is the Clean New Deal. But, you know, what it requires is a slight investment. Now, am I begging you for money? No. I, I could really use your, I don't know, people power. I'd love for you to share what we've got going on. I would love for you to, uh, you know, be involved, become a volunteer, um, go knock on doors eventually. We've got to create a political revolution like Bernie said. And by the way, Bernie said that Wall Street's business model is fraud. And he told the truth. And he was very involved with helping to find out what ultimately happened at the Federal Reserve. And then he went silent. I don't know why Bernie did that. Do you? But same with Elizabeth Warren and many others. I, I've got all of these answers that everybody hid from me. And I don't know why they did. But I guess they were all concerned with maybe them losing their own place in the universe, I suppose. I, I don't know. But all I know is that it hasn't helped. Things are going from bad to worse. It will get even worse, especially if Trump overcomes all of this insanity to, to win the presidency. But the presidency ultimately is not the most important thing. We've got to build a movement that's 10 times bigger than MAGA. And we got to crush MAGA. Because what I've always said is corruption births and fuels fascism. And this movement is going to crush corruption and drown the fascism it fuels. It's so easy. It's every movie we've ever seen. Have you ever rooted for the good guy? Have you ever been on the side of Neo? Have you ever been on the side of all of our superheroes? Yeah, become a superhero with me. Let's do this. Be a dynamic American. You know, I mean, it's like... I, I don't know. There's a lot of good people in media out there. I, I mean, I, I could see Taylor Swift coming on board because our number is 13, and that's what I was trying to get to. We got to raise money. We spent four and a half million dollars to get the 29 trillion dollar truth to you that there's no market for, and so we're giving it to you free because all people buy are lies. But we got to break through that. But if we had 357,000 people contribute 13 dollars, you guys would match what we've already done. But that's not including the tens of thousands of hours of the work and everything that had to go into this and the sacrifice that I lost a lot to do this. Is it worth it? No. Unless we win. And we have to win. Why? Well, because the rule of law and democracy and the future of the world depends on it. And so for all of you people out there that are incredibly dynamic, that, that know what it's like to, to achieve, we need doers. We need people that get things done. We need athletes. We need people who have achieved things in their life. And we need people to come together and we need to groove together to break all of this monstrosity, this mon monstrous stupidity. Yeah. And let's, let's, let's be superheroes for Halloween and everything from this point forward. And so what do I want to finish off with? I think I said everything that I wanted to for the moment, but It's just, I see so many beautiful, strong, wonderful people out there that do fantastic things. We've got to come together. You know, I'm always reminded, I think it was in the second uh, Matrix. It was, was it uh, the Matrix Revolutions? Anyway, where everybody was grinding in, you know, Zion before the machines came and, you know, that whole humanity thing. It's like, yeah, man, let's get all the beautiful people together and let's do the righteous grind in more ways than one. And I'm not being too ridiculous. I, the righteous grind is to carry the truth, to carry the options, to make the world a better place so that you know, good overcomes evil. And that's all this is, is evil. Fuck corruption, fuck evil. Listen, people, I've got the answers. I just need millions of you to come together. And I know 
by the way, this isn't, you know, an autocracy. It's not Patrick Lovell dictating to everybody where I want you to salute me and say Zeke Patrick Lovell by any stretch. I'm all about democracy. I've got the answers that I need to put in the hands of the brilliant people out there to have you guys go, oh, man. So if we did this, this, and this, we could do that, that, this. And, and yeah, that would be fantastic. Because, look, I'm the producer, okay? That's what I am. Like I've said in previous Truth Bombs, look, I'm not Moses, I'm not Jesus, but I am leading Exodus from corruption to create the resurrection of the American dream. Because it's that simple. And I've been doing this for the last 20 years. I've got every single aspect of this covered, but I need you. I need tens of millions of you. Think of me as Uncle Sam saying I need you, which is really what I should have said at the beginning. And it just occurred to me. You know what? Think of the $13 commitment that I'm asking you to invest in a one-time contribution, unless you can bring 13 people in and you'll get a t-shirt with a hashtag and then we'll come on board and we'll just make this thing fly. But $13 is what I'm asking for in honor of the original 13 colonies that, you know, did everything and laid it all on the line to break free of King George III and the East India Trading Company and all that came with it to create liberty and justice for all based on separation of powers, which is a fantastic system if you can keep it. So that's what I was going to say about Taylor Swift and 13 and all the Swifties out there. Yeah, 13, by the way, means the, <laughs> means, uh, the revolution and harmony in the universe, man. You guys are awesome. Can we come together? Literally, I've got these answers so that we can all flourish, man. The stupidity of corruption is the darkness of everything. The greatest trick the devil ever played was to convince the world he didn't exist. Stop letting them piss on your head with you blindfolded on your knees with your mouth open. Come on, man. Rise up. So I'll finish with that. Oh, did I not say what I meant to say about the $13 in bonds? Think of me as Uncle Sam. This is like a $13 bond to resurrect the American dream. That's what it is. That's what it is. Yes, Eureka, man. That's what the United States government sold the American people to basically finance the war effort to, you know, to defeat fascism, which is another part of this, right? Let's do this. We can do this together. My God, ready? Rise, roar, revolt. Failure is not an option. Onwards and upwards. And oh yeah, by the way, for those of you who are kind of seeing me for the first time, my last name is Lovell. Oh yeah, 13 matters. And yeah, that, that is a continuity to former commander Jim Lovell, who he and his team figured out the impossible way to get Apollo 13 back safely. That's what we do as Americans. We figure it out. And oh yeah, it, it's it's all, you know, all of it is the righteous grind. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, please share. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. But most importantly, man, I would love to see production people, people that know software, people who understand the paradigm. Man, come on, bring it. Let's come together. Guys, I've got the $70 trillion truth. Is there a better way to spend $70 trillion than on corruption? Oh, yeah. All good people welcome, my friends. Onwards and upwards.